Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith with the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. I'm going to give you an update on the Arctic sea ice in this video. What happens in the Arctic does not stay in the Arctic. The Arctic region is a very critical part of the overall climate system and we're undergoing changes there that basically dwarf changes anywhere else on the planet. So we're rapidly losing the Arctic sea ice cover on, over the Arctic Ocean. We're also experiencing exponential de decline in snow cover in the Arctic, mostly in the spring months. These two factors is making the Arctic a lot darker than it used to be. Because it's darker, it's absorbing all that solar radiation in the summer and the 24 hours of sunlight, and that's heating the Arctic. So we're getting this temperature amplification in the Arctic. So overall temperatures in the region are anywhere from five to eight times um, faster rates of temperature rise than anywhere else on the planet. And if you compare it to the equator, it's even greater. So the temperature difference between the Arctic and the equator is decreasing, and therefore the jet streams are slowing down and becoming wavier, causing extreme uh, temperature um, extreme weather events, and that includes heat waves, such as we've experienced recently in India and other places, torrential rains, for example, in Houston, um, in various, um, in, in large parts of Europe, for example. For every degree rise in temperature on the planet, on average, we have 7% more water vapor in the atmosphere, and this water vapor, when it rises up in the atmosphere, heat rises, when it rises up, and cools down and condenses and forms water droplets in clouds, that energy is released, fueling very intense storms. Also, with the increased storms and the increased water vapor in the atmosphere, there's a lot more lightning strikes. So for every degree rise in temperature, I've seen numbers quoted of increases in lightning strikes, um, anywhere from 5 to 12%. Uh, I'm not sure which number is more valid of those two. I've seen both numbers reported. Um, so, for example, recently in Europe, we had some days where there was hundreds of thousands of lightning strikes, even up to 300,000 lightning strikes. So if those strikes occur in areas that have been undergoing drought, then they can trigger forest fires, wildfires, things like that. So always try to think of the climate as a system. And we're getting massive changes in the Arctic, which I'll talk about more here. And what happens in the Arctic doesn't stay in the Arctic. It affects the overall climate system of the planet. So basically what you see here is um, to look at Arctic sea ice in great detail. This site, just Google Arctic sea ice graphs. And this is an excellent site where there's all kinds of real, basically information from the previous day. So for example, uh, sea ice um, concentration, um, another concentration here, all of these different graphs. So what I'll do is I'll look at the Arctic sea ice extent at the moment first. So this shows the Arctic sea ice extent, which is defined as area of ocean with at least 15% sea ice. So what you see here is this is 2016 coming down here, very rapid decline, well under the two sigma region well under the mean from 81 to 2010, well under the 2012 re previous record minimum. But in the last few days, it's flat, in the last week or two, it's flattened out and it's coming up here. Um, there's a lot of melt ponds forming in the ice and that could be, you know, there is fluctuation from day to day on, on this, but we're still tracking well under any previous year. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, okay, so at the other end of the planet, this is the ice extent over and around Antarctica. So we're moving into winter there. The ice is growing. This line shows a, a long-term medium. And this is where the sea ice, so we're getting extensions crossing the, the long-term mean in some areas and decreasing in, in other areas. This is what's happening. This is interesting in, in terms of Antarctic sea ice extent. 
This was the previous year, 2015. This is the long, this is the mean and with two standard deviations. And this is what's happening now. So we're tracking, we're tracking on the low side in Antarctica this year. I can explain that in uh, separate videos. Um, going back to the Arctic, this is the median here, and this is where we are um, at the moment. So it, there's certain regions where we're lacking a lot of ice um, compared to the median um, in other years. So where are we heading? Are we heading to a record year? Well, let's look at um, some other data. So this is, um, these um, websites are all accessible from the original one here from Arctic sea ice graph. So if you just click on the particular graph, you can get information, which I'm showing you here. So if we look at, for example, concentrations, I've chosen May starting in year 2000, sea ice concentration. Then we can look at a movie here and you can see what happens um, this is going month by month. Actually, what I wanted to do is something a little bit different. Let's say the start month is May, and let's only do um, fixed month animations. So animations just for May from the year 2000 to present. So let's have a look at this. So this is May 2000, May 2001, 2002, etc. And you can see how the concentration. So the bluer you are, the less ice there is. 100% concentration means it's, it's solid ice. 15% concentration would be 15% of the ocean is ice. 85% is water. So you can see where the uh, blue areas are from year to year. Um, there's no data yet for May 2016. So you can track, you know, any, any parameter that you want to um, Let's have a look at the uh, snow extent. I said that what, you know, the Arctic sea ice extent is dropping exponentially. So, so that's making the Arctic a lot darker because the light, bright white reflective ice and snow covering the ice are reflecting a lot of solar radiation away, keeping it cooler in the Arctic. And they were losing that ice, so now it's being replaced by the dark ocean underneath, which is, absor is absorbing a lot more energy. Um, also, the snow cover on land is very important. So this is over the overall, the Northern Hemisphere winter snow cover. There's not a, you know, there's not a lot of change. In fact, the long-term trend is slightly higher, um, which could just be a result of its warming. When it's warmer, but still below zero, you get more snowfall. But in the spring is where we see a large drop. So this is the Northern Hemisphere in the spring over time. So we're seeing a very sharp decline in the spring. And this is uh, putting the Arctic in a state where, where, the, uh, where we're going to get a lot of ice melt and a lot of warming in the summers that occur after these springs because there's less snow cover. So the tundra and the like the permafrost is exposed, it absorbs energy causing warming. Let's have a look in the fall. We're actually seeing a slight increase in the fall in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, it's not getting cold as quickly. It's dropped, when it drops below zero, then you get more snow. So this isn't too surprising. Um, if you look in Eurasia, um, you see similar trends to the overall Northern Hemisphere. So the spring, a rapid drop here, also the North American spring, a rapid drop. Whereas in the overall winters, there's a slight increase overall in the winter, and this is because the fall is, is rising in each case. Okay, so what's happening is in, it's the spring snow cover that is dropping very quickly, making the Arctic darking, darker, setting it up for uh, temperature amplification over the summers, causing lots of melt. Now, it's not just the, um, okay, the, actually what I wanted to show here is this is, there's loads of information out there on the web about the sea ice. One of the best sites is connected with the Arctic sea ice graphs and it's people, it's known as Nevin's blog and he writes, um, this, this is bi-weekly updates on the state of the 
sea ice. So this is month to month. This is really good stuff. These people really know what they're talking about. So there, here's a recent update on what's going with the sea ice, on with the sea ice, and so on. Here's an example of a graph from the Japanese satellites on sea ice extent. So here's where we are in 2016. Here's where we all other previous years. Green is 2012, the other previous minimum, which is here. Okay, different uh, sensors, different satellite. And uh, we were going down very rapidly, but in the last uh, t first 10 days of June, we, we didn't lose too much ice. And there's reasons for this, we think. But remember, this is a dynamic system. The, loss of s the ice can either melt and decrease, or it can be exported out of the Arctic Ocean. And the export depends a lot on the wind patterns. Um, if the winds are favorable for pushing the ice um, out into the Atlantic, then we have lots of sea ice loss and the extent declines rapidly. So there's all kinds of good data here, good animations, good images. Um, you can have a look at some of this. This is very interesting here. Um, this is a naval research um, set, um, views of the sea ice speed and drift. And I'll talk a bit more about that in a minute. But so the blogs are excellent here and uh, it talks about the meteorology and so on. Um, now, the sea ice, it's easy to measure the sea, easier, relatively easy to measure the sea ice extent and the sea ice area, area being where there's 100% concentration, extent being where there's 15% or more sea ice. Um, those can be measured from satellite, but also we need to measure the thickness in order to get the volume. So there's the cryosat satellite, there's the PO mass modeling, there's, other, there's various sites where we can get the sea ice volumes. In order to get the volume, we need to know the thickness. This is the mean, this is the volume here. It's hard to see, but 2016 is tracking right here on the very low part of the envelope, well below the mean, well below the, um, the two sigma lines. Um, in fact, if you compare the numbers from this year to last year, on May 31st, in 2016 relative to 2015, we're 2180 cubic kilometers lower in sea ice volume than we were. Um, here's another image where this is to 2016 here. Um, graphs, there's all kinds of data here. And this shows you where the ice thickness is much lower than this year as compared to the 2000 to 2015 average, you know, in these particular regions. So there's lots of blogs here going on. There's also some very good forums here. So Arctic Sea Ice forums, they're all, once again, they're connected to the Arctic Sea Ice Graph site, Nevin's blog site. There's all kinds of topics. So this is the 2016 melting season. People are regularly following it, they're closely posting, watching it like a hawk. Of course, those little fluctuations in the sea ice, when we get a steep drop, people are all getting excited. Whoa, this is the year we go to a blue ocean, no sea ice, you know, and then it flattens out a bit. And then there's a bit of, you know, um, there, there's a bit of, ah, you know, 2012 is a bust or, or 2016 rather is a bust. It's not going to happen. Um, and then it picks up into a steep drop again. And, you know, people that are following it very, very closely, um, there are people that are spending hours of their day on this, looking at every, every, every variation. So, you know, I try to look at the overall big picture. So this is an example for, you know, ice sickness 2016, you know, on, on the, the projected for the 17th. And this is what it is. Um, in 2012. So you can see the ice is a lot thinner. Um, this is the ice thickness um, over 30 days. Um, and you can see how it's varying, how it's much thinner, how it's sitting out quickly. And this is the ice, um, this is the sea ice speed and drift. And I can go back here and you can select particular days. So what I was talking about is, is Here's very strong, so this is in centimeters.